that's what came in. And so I'm gonna take the next 15 minutes to hit on some school stuff that y'all need to know. Then I'm gonna pass the phone to Brother B. Anthony. I know some of y'all said y'all wanted time to have my book and have a chance to sign it. So once he's done, that's where y'all can go over there and get the book. I'll sign it for those of y'all who don't have them. Um, school, school, school. Couple things. Number one, vaccinations. You don't have to vaccinate your child in order for them to go to public school or charter school. Please keep that in mind. They don't have to be sh uh, shot, okay? Only Mississippi, West Virginia, and Washington, D.C. requires vaccination. If you don't want your child to get vaccinations, all you have to do when you go to the public or charter school, okay, you need to have the immunization exemption form signed from your doctor stating that the child doesn't need to be immunized. If you can't find a doctor in Detroit who will sign it for you, go to the County Board of Health website. Count Detroit, County Board of Health, download the immunization exemption form, you sign it yourself, and you take it to school, and life goes on. That's for public and charter school. They do not have to be immunized for either one. Okay? Y'all need to know that. Uh, number two, for those of y'all who got young children, if you see problems with the young children early, speech problems, hearing problems, vision problems, autistic problems, cognitive delay problem, you can get them special service early on. In most counties from birth to kindergarten, there's free services for any child who got skill delays. Don't wait until they're in kindergarten to get them the help. Get them the help as soon as you see the delay. Special ed starts in three years old, preschool. I'm not a fan of special ed, but I don't mind it for preschool children. Why? Because if you get to them early enough, you can probably eliminate the need for special ed later in school. Parents, make sure you read everything before you sign it. A lot of stuff going to be put in your face this public school year. Don't sign it until you've read it. And don't let nobody make you feel that you have to sign it when you're not ready. What should be your response to anybody in the school? I will take this home. I'm not reading it now. Well, it's only one page. I don't care. I'm going to take this home. Read it, sign it, and then bring it back. Y'all have to stop allowing them to force you against your will to sign stuff and you don't even know what's on it. Also, if you gave the school permission to evaluate your child last year for special ed and the school did not evaluate your child before school ended, consider sending a letter to the principal telling them that you rescind your request for an evaluation. I'm pulling it back. I'm rescinding it. Why? Because your child is in a new grade with a new teacher. And it might be the case that the reason they struggled last year is because of that teacher. So don't get them tested this year off of a problem that existed last year. Rescind your evaluation and see how well your child does this year. If your child is in special education, make sure you go to the IEP meetings, make sure you take good notes at the IEP meetings, and if you don't agree, always express your disagreement on paper. Write a letter to the principal. I want you to always write your complaints. Write your complaints. Why? Because if we get to a point where we need to force Detroit public schools to pay for your child to go to a private school, we can do that on public expense. We can do that on public expense, okay? And your, the papers, the complaints that you had will actually be what we use to force it. Under federal law, if you can prove the school district failed to educate your special ed child, you can make them pay for a private school. Did everybody hear that? If your child is in special education and you can prove that Detroit is not teaching your special ed child, you can actually make Detroit pay for your child to go to a $20,000 a year school. You don't pay a dollar, but you gotta be able to prove it. And that's where your letters come in. Okay? Very important that you do that. Don't let the school tell you you have to sit in the class with your child. You have to sit in the class with your child in order for them to come to school because they're a behavior problem. There's no law that requires a parent to sit in the class with their children. There's no law. But you have to let them know that. Once you start sitting in the class with your kids, they got you. You don't even do it one time. And you tell them. There's no law that makes me sit in the class with my child. Well, your child ain't gonna be able to come to kindergarten. Really? 
Give me a letter telling me that my child is not allowed to come to kindergarten. That's a state right that I have as a citizen for my child to come to kindergarten. Well, we don't think he's ready for kindergarten. He's too immature. Well, only way he won't get mature is by being there. Give me a letter saying my child can't come to kindergarten, and then I'm going to sue the school district for discrimination. They can't do that. Don't let them tell you that the child can't come to school if they don't have their medication. You cannot tell a child they can't come to school because they ain't got ADHD medicine. ADHD ain't got nothing to do with school. So don't let them force you. Find out if your child's teacher is highly qualified. You need to know if your child's teacher is highly qualified. Why? Because if your child's teacher isn't highly qualified, they're not going to learn much this year. Ask the teacher, are you a highly qualified teacher? Ask the principal, or is the teacher a highly qualified teacher? Parents, make sure you check homework every night. Make sure homework gets done before anything else. Make sure you check it and make sure you don't do it. And if you're the parent of a child in kindergarten, first grade, second grade, stop doing their homework for them. I'm coming across too many black parents who are doing their kids' homework because you ain't patient enough to teach them how to improve their skill. If you're doing their homework, they're not learning. Thank you. Stop doing their homework for them. That is ridiculous. You don't do that. What else? If the school calls you to come and pick your child up from school early because they misbehaving, don't do it. Don't do it. That is technically a suspension. Whenever you take your child out that school and it's for a reason other than you needing to take them out, that's a suspension. And they're not supposed to be suspending children consistently. <laughs> but if you take the child out and you sign them out, it wasn't a suspension. You pick your child up 20 days early from school, but there's only five suspension days on the record. You have no case to say that they was denying your child education because you signed your name and you took the child out of school. If your child is in special ed, you do have a right to go into the classroom and observe the classroom. If your child is evaluated and you don't agree with it, fax me the report so I can look at it and tell you what I think you need to do next. Send it to me. And if you don't agree with the conclusion of the evaluation, you have a right to another evaluation and the district has to pay for it. Did everybody hear that? If you don't agree with the psychological evaluation at your child's charter school or public school, you can get a second one done. It's called independent educational eval and the school district has to pay for it. Don't you ever give in to the school if you don't agree. They say your child is retarded, my child ain't retarded. You fight, you stand up for your child. Make sure you request a complete copy of your child's educational record every two to three years. Make sure you request a complete copy of your child's educational record every two to three years. Why do you need to do that? Because if there's information in your child's record that reflects negatively upon them, you have a right to get it taken out their folder. So if your child is going from elementary school to middle school, and there's a pink slip in there saying he tried to beat up the teacher, when all he did was push the teacher because she pushed him, that's not, that information is misleading. You can get that taken out. By a show of hands, who in here has ever requested of the principal a complete copy of the child's educational record? By a show of hands. Only one person. Now, some of y'all got kids in fourth grade, sixth grade, eighth grade, ninth grade. You've never seen what's in your child's record. So when they apply to a certain high school and they don't get accepted, and you're saying to yourself, I don't understand why my son didn't get in. Because there's information in their record that negatively reflects upon their character. And you didn't get it taken out beforehand because you didn't know it was in there. Now, the school will charge you $20 for the copies, but you can afford it. You get that for each child that you have. You write a letter. Principal Johnson, I requested a complete copy of my son Umar Johnson's record. Please make sure everything that's in a discipline folder, everything that's in a special ed folder, everything that's in a classroom folder, everything that's in a pupil pocket, pocket I want all of that in it. Let me know when it's going to be ready. Let me know if I owe you any money. It's normally $20. You should do that every two to three years. Yes, ma'am. When do they take IQ tests and how often are they given? A child is not given an IQ test ever. Most kids have never gotten one. 
Most kids have never gotten, who in here got an IQ test when they was in grade school? Only about two people, three people. You know why? IQ tests are not mandatory. You only give an IQ test for mental giftedness, right? Mental retardation, to see if the child is gifted. So you're looking for an IQ that's 130 or higher. Everybody got that? 130 or higher is mental giftedness. Mental retardation, Under 70. below 70. So 69 and below, mental retardation. 130 and higher, mental giftedness. So you only give IQ tests if you're trying to rule in giftedness, rule in retardation, or for learning disability. So every child tested for special ed is given an IQ test. Every child. Because the learning disability is based on the difference between the IQ score and the achievement score. Go ahead. Um, my son was in an accident when he was nine years old. So um, what you're saying then, when he got ready to go to the uh, uh, schools for what you call those kids that uh, to test them? For special, special aid? Special aid. Okay. Special aid class. So did, was he... Was it possible that they gave him an IQ test? Not without your permission. If he was, you can only give an IQ test with parent permission. No child can be taken out of a classroom and tested without parent permission. I cannot test any child without signed permission from the parents. There's no such thing as a secret IQ test. Some schools might do it. I've heard of some horror stories, but legally they cannot. Now, will they take your child and see how they do first and then let you know if you want to test them? Because they already know what they do. Yeah, but they run into risk, because if you find out, that's a big lawsuit. No psychologist can test a child without a parent permission. The psychologist can only test with your permission. So if you ever heard that the school psychologist took your child, and you didn't give them a right to take your child, whether it was to talk to them or test them, I can't do either one. I cannot do counseling with a child without parent permission. I cannot test without parent permission. If you don't say yes, I can't do nothing. But I do know a lot of schools that got their psychologists taking kids and testing them and talking to them, that's illegal. You gotta have parent permission. Because we are educational specialists. You gotta have parent permission before we do what we do. I Teacher could talk to them, teacher could test them, not the psychologist. I remember it being where then he seen the psychologist to uh, put him in a certain school. Or well, that sounded like he was evaluated. So that means you must yes, have gave yes. permission. You signed permission. Yes, yes. Okay, yes. yeah, he was evaluated to see where he belonged. That, okay. As a That's result of the accident, they wanted to see what his IQ was to see if there was a brain injury. Yes. You follow me? Yes. If a child was in a car accident, I'm going to do IQ just to make sure, you know, there's no okay, immediate brain. brain injury, traumatic brain injury. Yes. Yeah, you want to watch that. Yeah, Other questions about the children? <laughs> Anyone with an issue they want to ask? Queen Mother? Oh, of course, but they're not going to tell you. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> the principal benefit, and I'm a former school administrator, they benefit from you being ignorant. Everybody does. The black ones and the white ones. They benefit yeah. from y'all not knowing a damn thing about educational law. Your child can only be suspended 10 days at a time, but they will suspend them for 20 because they know you don't know. Special ed kid cannot be suspended more than 10 days the whole school year. Did y'all hear that? Did y'all hear what I just said? A special education child in the United States of America can only be suspended 10 total days the whole 180-day school year. If your child was suspended at 11th day and they in special ed, you can definitely make them pay for your child to go to a private school. And some of y'all looking at my period, well, I know my special ed boy was suspended at least 20 days. <laughs> <laughs> well, guess what? He should be in a private school right now. So you need to get on your job and you need to send me an email so we can make that case and get that boy in that school. Thank you. Now, you don't get cash payout for special ed anymore. Y'all do know that, right? You don't get cash payout for special ed. <laughs> 20 years ago, they denied your child their education or they put them in special ed. They shouldn't have been in. They said, well, you got a million dollar lawsuit. That million dollar go to you in the, in the, in the, in the, in the, in the check. But that didn't work, because y'all start buying cars and sneaks and shit, right? <laughs> so what they said for now on, the money don't go to the parents, we put it in a trust fund for the child. So now he got a million dollars in a trust fund that you can use to pay for what? Tutoring, summer camp. You don't get the money. 
you send the invoice to the school district and they write the check out to the vendor. And if there's any money left over, where does it go? Towards their college education. Towards their college education. What if your child was in special ed and never should have been in special ed? Your child was diagnosed with a reading disability in the third grade, you found out in the sixth grade they didn't have one, they've been in special ed for three years, the school district now owes you compensatory education for three years. My child received special education and they never should have received it because nothing was wrong with them. They owe you comp ed. So that's 180 school days times three, times however much money they get per child. So you're looking at about $27,000 for you to spend on your child's education. Some of y'all got multiple multiple kids. The flip is also true. Your child is mentally, your child is autistic, and the school district didn't find out until your child was in the seventh grade that they was autistic. You're old comp ed for seven years. Why? Because the school district is required to find the kids with the problems. You ain't got to tell them your kid got a problem. We got to find the kid. So if they didn't find, your, find out your child was autistic to the seventh, they owe you seven years of comp ed. How much money they spend on a child in Detroit? What, $6,000 a year? Special ed kids are $12,000 a year? Times seven years? What's that? 12 times seven is? 84,000. That's $84,000 in a slush fund for you to spend on your child academically any kind of way you want. Y'all need to start keeping notes, black parents. Y'all tend to lose y'all due process cases because y'all don't have nothing on paper. How many of y'all got a notebook where whenever y'all go to the school, y'all open up that notebook and y'all write in it? You should have a different notebook for every school year. This school year, you got three kids? Go to the dollar store and get three notebooks. You got five kids? Go to the dollar store and get five notebooks. You got one kid? Go to the dollar store and get one notebook. That's all you need and a fresh set of ink pens. You keep that in your car or you keep that in your wallet. And whenever you got to go up to the school, you carry that book. And I don't care if you only had a two-minute conversation with the principal. You open that book. You write the date, August 24th, 7.30. Principal stopped me when I was picking up Raheem to tell me Raheem had a terrible day, or Raheem had a great day, or Raheem scored the highest on the test, or Raheem did the worst. You write it down because you don't know when that information could come back to help you. Even the bad information can help you. But y'all don't keep notes. And let me tell you what the school does. When you try to bring a case against the school, what do they do? They come in here with a whole big box of notes. And it's all lies. They made it up last night. I'm telling you the truth. They made it all up. But because they have a big box of lies, and you don't have no box at all, they went over on you. Yes, ma'am. Excellent question. What is the procedure if the school district wants to expel a special ed kid versus a regular ed kid? Now, special ed children, generally speaking, cannot be expelled from school. Special ed children, generally speaking, cannot be expelled from school. But if it involves weapons, drugs, or serious bodily injury, now it's easier to expel a special ed kid. Weapons, drugs, serious bodily injury. I beat him with this chair, right? They can get rid of him. But if, if it's for anything other than weapons, drugs, and bodily injury, that special ed kid technically cannot be expelled. Now can they make the case? But it's hard to expel a special ed kid because by law, if they have a disability, they have a right to be in school. Are y'all following me? So special ed kids have more protections than the regular kids. Regular ed kid can be suspended as many times as the principal want to suspend him. He's a special ed, 10 days total. Regular kid can be expelled for pushing the teacher. Special ed child, he ain't hurt the teacher, he just pushed her. He ain't going nowhere. The special ed kids got more rights, but we don't want them in special ed because they receive an inferior education. Do y'all see the trade off? Yeah. You get more rights, but you get a worse education. And y'all got to make that decision, because some of y'all put your kids in special ed so they can stop being suspended. Well, I'm tired of him being suspended every damn day. Dr. Umar said he go to special ed, he can only be suspended today. Okay, that's true. But now, look at the quality of the education. Your son is in eighth grade being taught on the third grade curriculum. He's not going to be functional when it's time to graduate. He's going to be living on you for the rest of his life, because you let him get miseducated. 
Remember why special ed was created. Special education was created to resegregate the black kids from the white kids in the aftermath of the busing movement. The white folks didn't want the black kids in the same school. So they created special ed to separate them. And they couldn't say it because they was black. So they said because he's retarded. She's learning to say it. They used the labels to cover the racism. Are y'all listening to me? Yes. The label was created to cover the racism. So y'all gotta understand why special ed was even birthed. It had nothing to do with helping our kids learn. It was about giving them an inferior education. My brother. Two questions. Um, do you have any thoughts about the implications of a lot of the CCW laws around the country and what that? What do you mean by CCW? Uh, concealed carrier uh, weapons, uh, folks being able to carry weapons. Mm -hmm. and, you know, well, it, it, it varies CCW. by state. In Pennsylvania, I have a license to carry. You know, it, it, it varies by state. I think we do need to have, you don't need to have a license to have a gun in your house, though. Right. That's the constitutional right. Everybody heard that, right? Unless you're a convicted felon, then obviously. But other than that, you can go to the gun store right now if you have a license and proof of address and buy a gun and take it straight home. If the cops stop you on the way home, you have a receipt to show I just bought this, so I'm not carrying a concealed weapon. I'm simply transporting this weapon home, okay? But uh, I know a lot of states are trying to track down. They're trying to reduce the amount of black folks who carry. They want us to be defenseless in case there's martial law. And the interesting thing I learned about you guys, Michigan, y'all have one of the biggest white militias in the country. Mm -hmm. Y'all have a group of white male citizens who train every week, who train to kill. They're not cops. They're regular men who are a militia in case the state ever needs them. So you know what that's about, right? If they ever got to come into Detroit to, to put down an insurrection from the blacks. I was watching it on TV the other day. The, the Michigan militia, one of the most notorious in the country. So if there's anybody who needs weapons, it's Detroit. They start coming down from the mountains of Auburn Hills and everything else that's around them. <laughs> you ain't going to be able to use no slingshot. But you got to remember now, even during slavery, mm -hmm. they've always had laws that allow regular citizens to be deputized as cops in the event of an emergency. So I believe in weapons. I think you need to have them. I got a butter knife, a hot fork. <laughs> and the second question, yeah. um, I've heard you uh, comment on uh, uh, formula, baby formula. Yes. Yes, uh, Similac for my mother. Similac, stay away from it. Isomil, stay away from it. Inorganic. Similac is made by Abbott Laboratories. Oop. Abbott Laboratories also makes Depakote. And they control the HIV test. Psychiatric medicine. They give Depakote to schizophrenic people. They also use it for uh, people with seizures. My point is that the Baby formula is being made by drug companies. How long ago? Oh, this has been going on forever. Oh, no, wait, 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 That's why he ain't never grown no hair, because... <laughs> no, I'm playing with this. He's just crazy as I don't know. Because that damn milk! <laughs> Give the babies breast milk. Ladies, if you, if you don't... If, if the, if, this That's what they for. Call Doctor like Africa, okay? My brother Tahuti Maad Ra. That's my Scott man. Whitaker, Doctor Sabi. They got herbs that make the milk flow. Thank you. Okay, but you got to stop giving them that machine milk. It destroys the bond, that the spiritual bond between a mother and a child. You're disrupting that. It's not healthy. Breastfed babies do better on every index compared to children who are not breastfed. I'm not saying I don't sympathize with women because it is a, it's a commitment to breastfeed. You know, breastfed babies tend to have bigger heads. That's why mine is the way, you know what I mean? So, but it's better for the child. They live longer, they're healthier, less medical problems. It's a natural immunization system. The breast milk is the immunizer. Thank you. Okay? In fact, black women's breast milk was considered so special that in slavery, the white women preferred that you gave their kids your breasts than their breasts. It's instead of about their milk that's better than ours. And now we don't even want to, you know what I mean? You do too. So that's something we need to get back into. And the drugs that last one I'm gonna move on. The drugs that, that uh, kids are taking for ADHD. 
What does that do to? Okay, the ADHD medication side effects. Listen to me now for my ADHD parents. Ritalin, Adderall, Stratera, Cycler, Vyvanse, Concerta, all these are the ADHD meds. They kill brain cells on contact. Kill brain cells. Mess with the kidney, liver, heart function. Can cause heart attack and stroke. Okay? Reduces the size of the brain. Shrinks the growth of the body. So your son was supposed to be six feet tall, or he's going to be four feet tall. Okay? It also caused baldness. A lot of our boys are in the third grade. They're going permanently bald in the third grade. Okay? What else does it do? Epilepsy, diabetes, and for me, one of the most dangerous side effects of the psychiatric meds for ADHD is that it, uh, it suppresses the boy's ability to produce healthy semen. So a lot of our young men won't be able to have kids when they get older because you gave them those drugs. It's classified by the Drug Enforcement Agency of America as a Schedule B drug. That means it's just as addictive as cocaine and opium. If you don't believe me, go to the library tomorrow, take out the DEA handbook, drug classifications, or get on the internet and you will see Ritalin classified with cocaine and opium. This is what you're giving your children so they can sit still long enough to be miseducated by white teachers. Okay? They don't need drugs, they need love. They need love. Spend some time with your kids. The only reason why they can't sit still is because they want mama's attention. They want daddy's attention. We don't raise our kids the way we used to. We let TV do it. We have to start doing it. Queen Mother, and that'll be my last one, and I'll turn it back I, over to you. I just want you to um, answer, what happens to the money if they were given the funds for the million dollars, mm -hmm. and the child did not continue to go to college or anything else, and they never... They, the money dries up. It can only be used for that child. Only for educational only purposes? Only for educational purposes. There, so it's best the child use it some kind of way. Oh. It's best the child use it. expand... Um, um, Time. I mean, what if they waited until they were 21 and decided to go to college? Do you think they could still? They can still. Well, remember now, special ed goes up to age 21. Special, so yeah, if they're okay. 21, they can still tap. Even if they're beyond 21, they should still be able to tap because it's their money. But if they're 21, they can definitely tap because special ed goes up to age 21. Which means what? If your child is in special ed and they're supposed to graduate Detroit Public High School this coming June, and you know your child ain't ready to graduate because they can't read or count or write, what are you supposed to do as a responsible black parent? You're supposed to oh, let the principal man. know that my child will not be receiving a diploma this June because y'all ain't taught him. He's 18, special ed ends at 21. That means he got three more years. He ain't going to come back to the school. Uh-uh. That high school is going to pay a tutor to come to your house to tutor your child in subjects that he should have been taught in school. Are y'all following me? Yeah. Don't you let your special ed child graduate and you know they're not ready for the world. I'm going to put that on you. The law says the school must continue to teach until age 21 if the parent feels the child ain't ready to graduate. But some of y'all are graduating academically deficient children. And you know they're not going to do nothing but go to the streets. Don't do that. I know his ego is going to be hurt that he can't get a diploma this year. But you know it's in his best interest not to. I tell parents all the time, your son needs three more years of high school. Well, he's ready to leave. Okay, are you ready to go to jail to go visit him? Because I don't know what he's going to do reading on the third grade level as a 12th grader. So we got to, you know, we got, but the thing about it, if your child gets to the 12th grade and still reading on the third grade level, where you been for the last nine years as the parent? Why are you just now finding out at high school graduation that he ain't ready? You should have knew this four or five years ago. We got to stay on our job. And that's why one thing I'm going to start doing when I travel around, and I need to start, I'm going to start carrying an academic test kit, right? So you have a kid. Let's say uh, one of the children here. Dad say, well, you know what, Dr. Umar, they say my daughter got reading problems. I'm going to pull it to the side, take out an academic kit. I'm going to give her a 15-minute test, quick and dirty and let you know what I think. I'm going to have to start doing that because a lot of us don't have psychologists in our cities who we can trust to tell us the truth about our children's skills. So I'm going to start traveling with my little set. You know, a couple of hours, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you ain't got it, I'm going to tell you. And I'm going to let you know the real deal. 
Okay? So you'll be able to get it quick and dirty right on the spot. In fact, I wish I had it for tomorrow, because tomorrow we want all y'all to come on out. Conscious Community Collective Grand Opening, 227 Iron Street, I-R-O-N. Make sure y'all come. 10 to 10 tomorrow. 10 until 10. I'll be there from about 3 until 8. If you got paperwork I need to look at, bring it. Dr. Umar, this is my son's eval. Can you look at this and tell me what you think? You can do that. You got a question about your child? Come on out tomorrow. I'll be up there chilling, 227 Iron Street. And uh, you can bring, bring, bring me whatever you need me to look at. Report cards, whatever. No, but yes, let me explain. No, we're not. But because black kids are subject to a miseducation, dyslexia is diagnosed more amongst us, not because they have dyslexia, but because they're receiving poor reading instruction. Do you see that? Dyslexia is defined as a serious reading problem. And remember now, a lot of these conditions cannot be proven to exist. Now, dyslexia is real. The neurological aspect, kids who write backwards, yeah, spell, that's real. Literally, the letters are. Yeah, that's real. Yeah, but do we, okay, so you're talking about true dyslexia. Yeah. Do we have true dyslexia when a white fight tomorrow? Okay. No. But a lot of our kids are misdiagnosed with dyslexia. Not that version, but other versions, because all dyslexia is a serious reading problem. That's just one type of it. You follow me? Yeah. Our kids are diagnosed with dyslexia more because they receive a poorer education. So it's not that they have any